Hey folks, my name is Mo Amir and this is Van Collar, British Columbia's Bonafide Culture and Politics TV talk show. Tonight is all about the laughs as Just for Laughs Vancouver Festival is on from now until February 25th. And you know that I'm a big fan of stand-up comedy, so we're going to showcase some incredible local talent from this year's festival. Now, my fake plants died because I did not pretend to water them, something that Vancouver's favorite comedy couple and noted plant lovers can help me with. Jumping off your phone and into your hearts with their three and a half million followers on TikTok, they led Vancouver Pride last year. They are, of course, husbands, Darcy Michael and Jeremy Bear. Darcy, Jeremy, Thanks We're so much here. for being on the show. Thanks for having look at us. Jair's I, first TV <laughs> interview. First TV. Look at how handsome you look on that monitor. Con congratulations to go from millions of views to, you know, uh, <laughs> tens of thousands of views on chat. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> That's what I was saying to him in the car. I'm like, what are you nervous about? We've, we've bombed in front of millions. What is this matter? Absolutely. So I want to hear about this TikTok experience because I know yeah. that it was kind of a tough time for comedians during the COVID-19 pandemic lockdowns. Yeah. A lot of people took to baking bread. You <laughs> we, guys took we just, to uh, TikTok. Yeah, yeah, it was a weird one. Like, here's like three months before COVID hit, we got a puppy. Okay. And I started a TikTok page for her. As you would. Because I just wanted to be able to, I didn't know how to edit videos. And so I was like, TikTok, you can edit in the app. And I was like, oh, I'll just do that and yeah. send dumb puppy videos to Jer while he's at work. <laughs> okay. And I'm hanging out with the puppy. Uh, and then she uh, just, at the beginning of COVID, she went viral. Okay. And like, <laughs> all of a sudden, she has 100,000 fans. And, and after, he got jealous. I got jealous because I was like, I've been in this industry for 15 years touring coast to coast to coast schlepping to every job my like six month old golden retriever is now more famous than me i was like i don't think so i don't think so and like I, even when i started the account i was like i can't believe so you me. started this tiktok account out of spite out of spite pet? and you okay. know what i did I, I said i'm not gonna post on her account until we have the same amount of followers <laughs> and i didn't i went dark on hers people were wow. like where's Yuma's post, bro. Well, she's busy. Wow. Yeah, I was and, like. And so Darcy was obviously you've been the comedian for fifteen. Yeah, years fifteen, or so. sixteen yeah. years. Yeah. How did you get roped into the TikTok account? <laughs> it was accidental, really. Yeah. It was just walking in the behind while Darcy was filming it. Yeah. Uh, rolling my eyes. He would or making he, like snark remarks. I got in the <laughs> habit of filming first thing in the morning when he was getting ready for work. I'd just go on and say something quippy about like my house husband days. Right. It was COVID. There was I wasn't going anywhere. Where I was just gonna hang out with the dog for the day and he had to go to work. And so then he started chiming in. Okay. And then within like a couple months, all of a sudden he starts filming things, and that's yeah. when the beast was born. I was like, Oh, he he has Once I, a, I clued in. I'm yeah. Like, oh, okay. This is something. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna start I love filming it. that. I've lost Thirsty at the mall. Now I gotta find him. I could be gone for hours. What have you done? <laughs> is that a donkey? He just rent a donkey. They didn't even ask if I was sober. <laughs> Definitely one of my favorite accounts to follow. No, thanks. It's not just the lulls, though. You guys do talk about very, really important things that are important to you guys. Yeah, for sure. I know me. that uh, you were clapping back at some <laughs> kind of toxic protesters, if we can call them that. Can you, can you tell me about yeah, that? Yeah, you know, like I, our friend Connie Smudge, who's a, a, a light of love and energy in this city, legend. she's a legend. Hi everybody, it's me, Connie Smudge, and I'm here at the library, one of my favorite places in the whole world. And she mentioned to us that she was getting some pushback for uh, her drag queen story time at the Coquitlam Library, mm -hmm. which is a Saturday morning at 10 in the morning. There's five or six kids, her reading a fairy tale dressed as a fairy princess. It's, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. uh, and so she had told us, and I, I said to Jarrah, I was like, we gotta just put a little call out and see if we can help get yeah. some counter protesters. Because because I never want to draw attention because it's only five or six people that are protesting. Like right. these aren't, you know, huge monolithic trucks pulling in. Like <laughs> these are just a few people that are a little unhinged that want to spread hate. And so But it's not comfortable for people who are going there to be yelled at or to see for them, sure. Right? And yeah. and, not, and especially for the kids. 
Uh, unfortunately, you were sick the day of the protest. I, I actually like, said I he like was it. being a homophobe. I was like, okay, <laughs> you stay here, you homophobe. I guess I'll go and represent the family. <laughs> spreading love, not germs, Darcy. <laughs> <laughs> it's true it's true uh, and you got a big crowd i mean not just you but everyone kind everyone of it, it was, was a massive crowd yeah it was honestly like it was one of those days i was blown away like when i pulled into the parking garage people were cheering as i was pulling in and i was wow. like wow okay that's already more people than i expected and then they just kept coming and i went into the library at one point and got the i wasn't planning to film anything but the kids were singing this song and it was so beautiful to see after being outside because <laughs> these people that are protesting they have vile signs that yeah. say horrible things and i'm like how is that the message you want to children right. how is that whereas you know you walk in and it's connie just reading a beautiful story about love and acceptance and it was just you know when i got home that day i was like we focus so much on the hate that we forget to look for the hope and there's so much hope you know there's I so much that. joy uh it was you know like i get choked up even just thinking about it but yeah it was a really beautiful day unfortunately jared was on you know he was protesting <laughs> with the other ones he was Darcy. were you one of the guys in the mask were you in the mask wow. <laughs> that's what, your first wow. quite the allegations yeah. Yeah. Like, wow well you know he's a big part of the truck <laughs> convoy the in ottawa <laughs> I love that something positive came out of it because I think people look at the internet and they go, you know, it's all negative or it's yeah. all silly. It's all for the lulls. But the fact that you're able to bring community together for this positive message for is sure. So great. I think, it, you know, I think if anything, it just, you know, I, I'm a huge proponent for libraries anyways. I think the heart of every community is the library. Uh, and so anytime we can draw attention to the work libraries and librarians are doing for their community, especially nowadays, like if people are always talking about like getting books on tape and I'm always like, do you know about the library app? Do you know you can get it for free? And it actually helps support libraries, which brings in more community uh, of events and stuff so yeah i was i was really uh, really touched by the turnout and uh, and just being reminded after the last few years that you know community still exists and it's strong i love it yeah. now quickly to wrap it up jeremy you're on stage with darcy for the first time for the you're first not time. a comedian but you kind of got into this with the everything in tiktok how do you feel? Are you excited? I'm excitedly nervous. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I'm actually pretty calm about it. I think my whole demeanor is always pretty calm. Yeah. Okay. But I know that when, when I screw up, on stage It'll i have darcy there yeah. to make sure everybody is aware <laughs> that i screwed it up yeah instead of just moving on yeah. he'll, he'll be we'll spend a good 15 minutes yeah. talking about your failure <laughs> and how you can clean up this will be tiktok uh, as well right oh, yeah. Highlights? oh yeah. yeah absolutely okay, perfect. yeah, yeah. No, there's gonna be so many cameras <laughs> so many behind to the scenes as well it's really exciting that we yeah. finally get this chance to see our fans in person and you know like it's i'm just well, excited to get darcy back on stage it's been a few years yeah very he, exciting yeah. And we sold out the Vogue. Like he keeps bragging. He was like my first show, and I sold out the Vogue. Pretty impressive. Pretty nice <laughs> yeah. feather in your Took cap. Took me fifteen years. Yeah. <laughs> Jeremy Darcy, this was a pleasure. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Tonight. Thank you Absolutely. for having us, folks. That was Vancouver's funniest couple. You've already been following them on TikTok at the Darcy Michael, and of course they are husbands Darcy Michael and Jeremy Bear. Now, after some business, Vancouver Mayor Ken Sim wants to bring swagger back to the city. And Juno Award-winning comedian Jacob Samuel is here for it with plenty of ideas. We're going to get into it up next. <laughs>